Welcome to building the perfect onboarding and offboarding workflows for you. Uh, thank you for coming to our workshop. Uh, well, and welcome to day one of Altitude. My name is Brian Farrell. I'm Better Cloud's IT manager. And part of what I do is oversee the usage of our own product, Better Cloud, within Better Cloud, the company, by our IT team. I'm joined, with, uh, joined by Dan Gualtieri and Chelsea Stevenson. Hi, everybody. My name is Dan Gualtieri. I'm the lead instructor on the customer training and enablement team. So if you've ever checked out some of the training materials on support.bettercloud.com, that's why I have the fancy microphone, because I do all the voiceover work for those. Um, and you may recognize my face from them. If you'd like to see more of what we can offer from a training perspective, feel free to check out the uh, Better Cloud uh, Administrator Fundamentals course that we offer. And then I'll turn it over to Chelsea so that she can introduce herself. Hi, my name is Chelsea Stevenson, and I'm an implementation specialist here. I am responsible for all new customer implementations. We will also help internally to work with the teams to evaluate more technical solutions uh, for questions that might arise. Today, we'll be covering what is the perfect workflow. Ultimately, the perfect workflow can be depending on what your cloud infrastructure looks like. So to describe the differences, we will be dividing these into walking, running, and then parkour, showing differing levels of automation that can be done with better cloud. In a moment, Dan will actually go into the further details around these differences. But ultimately, we just want to show you how to build the best workflow for you. And determining what workflow is best for you really depends on your persona. So we've broken this up into a few different personas. Specifically, low cloud, I have multiple applications and I'm ready to integrate them with better cloud. Maybe you have an HRIS or an IDP all the way up to the fact that your user lifecycle management is completely automated. It's zero touch. And where you fall on this spectrum can be different for each organization. If you're a prospect or a brand new customer, you could all the way be at the top. You could be ready to have uh, your user lifecycle management fully automated and better cloud is that last piece. You can be a client with Better Cloud for a few years now, but you haven't evaluated where you fall on this spectrum. So reevaluating where you stand and understanding where you fall on this spectrum could be really useful for you. So let's take a look at the first section called walking. This is kind of an intro to what you can do in the basic versions of Better Cloud and how you can leverage Better Cloud if you don't have something like an IDP or an HRIS. That starts with that low cloud persona. You have multiple apps to integrate. Something like, say, Google, Slack, and Zoom. If you have Google, Slack, and Zoom, that's our, our Manage Plus 3. That's the basic version of Better Cloud that you can come in with. And you can orchestrate and automate things within those platforms. If you don't have an IDP, you're not going to be provisioning into those applications. So Better Cloud can handle that provisioning for you. So Better Cloud can handle the bulk of your user lifecycle management to make sure that everything's being done. Maybe you graduate and you have an IDP or an HRIS, but there's no automation there just yet. It's only your source of truth. You may want to switch around how you start onboarding and offboarding and what your trigger is, but ultimately the role of Better Cloud would still very much be the same. So now you have additional applications that you can set up in Better Cloud and more automation that you can run. As you continue on, maybe there is automation in your HRIS or your IDP system. Something like One Login, which is a partner of Better Cloud allows you to set up rules within one login itself to assign people to roles based on department or location. So based on those rules, you can automatically set things up in your IDP, but maybe it's not doing provisioning or, and it's not doing deprovisioning as users leave your organization. This is where the low cloud persona really ends. And it makes it so that better cloud is still handling the bulk of your user lifecycle management, but it gives us a great start and allows you to handle much of what an IDP or an HRIS could possibly do, and it supplements them so that Better Cloud can do all of that for you. Let's take a look at the hierarchy of onboarding and what we could do through Better Cloud. Now, it's a 3D world, but for the most part, workflows in Better Cloud are somewhat flat. You're building one workflow to take advantage of what you need to do. Maybe you need a workflow for all of your new users. Using our example stack before, Google, Slack, and Zoom, everybody in your organization gets access to Slack and Zoom. So in your all new users workflow, your when trigger will be when a new user is created, 
you wouldn't necessarily need an if condition because you want to do it for everybody. Then let's create them in Zoom, create them in Slack, and get them access to groups and files. Send them a welcome email. Now, as we continue down that list, let's look at department. Let's add an if condition. A new user is created and their department is. Maybe it's something like sales. If they're in the sales department, we'd need to go ahead and maybe level up their Zoom license, get them access to certain uh, LastPass groups and things like that. Maybe it's location specific. You need certain Slack channels based on your location. At the best situation, you can base it on title, get extremely granular with your workflows and say, based on your title, you need access to certain documents, certain shared drives and things like that. And the cool thing that you could do here is you can combine these in, in any uh, order that you need to. So if all new users are created, maybe you need it to be department and location or department and title or location and title. So you can add multiple and conditions for your if. So when a new user is created, if their department is sales, and if their location is Atlanta, maybe we need to do something on those users. When onboarding works best, if you can't tell, it works in a series of short workflows that just ensure that people have everything that they need when they start on their first day. So here's a really quick example of what that looks like. We have a marketing hire in our Atlanta team. There's three things we know about this user. They're new. The user didn't exist before, their department is marketing, and that their cost center, which we're using for location, is Atlanta. Now we need to consider race conditions. With a flat workflow structure, this is really important to consider. Notice in marketing and Atlanta, those two workflows on the right-hand side, we're changing a Zoom license and we're adding to some channels. This can't occur until the user exists in Zoom and Slack. Now on the left-hand side, if you do notice, Zoom access and Slack access are part of your new user workflow. So let's see what this looks like in the wild. A new user is created with the Department Marketing and the Cost Center Atlanta. Batter Cloud hits on all three of those workflows. We recognize that user and they're supposed to be in all three. Now we need to add them to the company distribution group, but wait one hour on those other two. They have dependent actions on that first workflow. So as the first workflow continues, let's get them access to company events. Let's get them access to Zoom and Slack. Now that they have the access they need, after one hour, allow the other two workflows to continue. This prevents your race condition and ensures that that new user has everything they need when they're first ready to start. Now, how can Better Cloud serve you on the opposite end as a user is leaving your organization? I'll turn it over to Chelsea so that she could talk a little bit about what we can do for th these personas. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, for uh, offboarding, there are two ways we can handle this. So we can do it automatically where we recognize group OU movement, or maybe the user is disabled and others. Another way is to run a workflow on demand within Better Cloud. So this is where you can see you, your users in Better Cloud and be able to run one of the workflows directly on them. This is especially helpful when you've got a time sensitive offboarding in which you want to make sure that you can run a workflow without having to wait for a certain alert to trigger. Here's an example of what that um, automatic workflow looks like. So we have a workflow where it's going to recognize once a user has been added to that offboarding OU and be able to take some automated steps. In this case, we're, for this example, we're re resetting the password, revoking access, removing their devices, transferring some calendars, files, and sites, then managing their email, making sure there's no email forwarding, and suspending and deleting that user. Next, we're going to sh show how an offboarding looks. So here we're going to see where the user, you can then select an action where we can run a workflow. And here we can uh, list out each of those actions, maybe toggle some off if there's a specific case, but ultimately run that workflow on demand. Uh, next, Dan is actually going to show what running looks like, so what a high cloud infrastructure is. So as you move up, now we're gone from walking, we're getting a little more advanced, we're going to start running, um, and we're moving up the persona tree here. So my apps are now talking to each other. This is the level that you're at. This is a situation where your IDP may be doing some provisioning and deprovisioning. In this case, your IDP could be provisioning people into something like LastPass, something like Zoom where BetterCloud previously was doing provisioning for you, and IDP may be handling that for you now. In this case, BetterCloud still serves a really useful purpose. 
I always give this example of someone that's a landlord. When you first get an apartment, you get a set of keys and it's awesome that you have access. You now have access to your new apartment. So you open the door, you head in on your first day and nothing's there. Awesome. I have access, but none of my stuff is there. I, I don't necessarily feel welcome sometimes. Um, there's no you know, note for me to say, hey, welcome to the building. We're happy to have you here. What Better Cloud does is it ensures that you have everything that you need on your first day. So while an IDP is able to grant you access, Better Cloud makes sure that everything is there when you first come in. We can send welcome emails, get you access to your channels, get you access to your drive files. If you're in Atlanta, in the example we saw before, maybe we want to share with you some menus from local restaurants that we'd go to send over an email saying, hey, your manager wants you to take, take you to lunch on your first day, pick from any of these places. Those are the types of things that Better Cloud is able to do that IDPs can't. So there's still a role for Better Cloud to play even when apps are talking to each other and your IDP is doing provisioning. As you continue up the scale, now you have some custom scripts. Now you're going up beyond just provisioning and you're scripting things. As part of onboarding, you can be using Python scripts. As part of offboarding, uh, you can be using something like PowerShell if you're a 365 client. But ultimately, scripts are still hard coded. And these are scripts that you'll need to go back and edit eventually. If in a year's time you haven't edited a script, onboarding and offboarding may not be happening as it's supposed to. And a part of Better Cloud's highest tier, which allows you to have API access, you can actually call some PowerShell scripts from Better Cloud. So in the instance that you did want to use custom scripts along with Better Cloud, you can do that, which really brings us to our highest tier. When the user lifecycle management process is completely automated, now it's zero touch. And with that zero touch onboarding and offboarding, that's where you want to be. So as we continue on to the next example, we see that even with an IDP, you can have a user get them access to Google, Slack, Salesforce, Alassian, and, and LastPass. It'll know certain things about that user. So now we can pass title, department, and call center. Okta is doing some profile mastering, but it isn't exactly doing everything you need. Maybe you need access to a Google organizational unit and Alassian groups. You need a Salesforce permission set and LastPass, you need to get them access to a certain group. This is a sales user. So we need to get them access to the LastPass sales group. We need to get them team drive access and uh, because it's a sales user, access to a certain sales presentation. Then afterwards, and being an IT manager in the past, I know this happens. Uh, you want to remember to get people set up with a 30, 60, 90 review. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. 30 days, everybody does it. 60 days, you know, most of the time it happens. 90 days, people are pretty integrated into the organization. It's easy to forget those. Better Cloud can set up wait for durations like we saw in our last example and we'll see in the next that ensure that after that 90 days, we're going to send a message over to the user CCing their manager, whoever that is with a dynamic field, saying, hey, it's been 90 days. Let's make sure that we set up that review. So as we continue on, here's an example of a marketing user in Atlanta, but now we're using an IDP. So this looks similar to what we did the last time, but we're introducing an IDP into the mix. Now notice the user's created, it triggers Better Cloud's three workflows, but they're getting access to those three applications that you see. As soon as the Better Cloud workflow starts, we're gonna wait for one hour. Why do we introduce that? Again, same as before, race conditions. We wanna make sure that the user has access to all of their applications. So notice applications are starting to populate in the cloud. The IDP is granting access to those applications. Now, it doesn't all happen at the exact same time. There can be some delays. That's why we add in that wait for one hour. Now, once the hour passes and we know for sure this user is in all of these applications, now kick off those workflows. Get them access to the things they need. The Atlanta Slack channel, the marketing calendar. If you're using our API, get them key card access and ultimately maybe send Jant commands out to their computer and send a welcome email from the Atlanta people and culture team and make sure they're CC'd. Now I'll turn it over to Chelsea to look, to look at what does this look like on the offboarding process? 
Absolutely. So when you're talking about offboarding, you may you might want to go past just doing one workflow that covers all your steps and really be able to customize what that offboarding is going to look like. So in this case, I want to show an example of partitioning into two workflows, uh, some different steps. This will allow some more visibility into which which stage a user is in their offboarding. So for this example, we have them resetting password, removing devices, transferring files, managing email, suspending the user. But then we want to suspend them and keep them in that suspending for maybe 30, 60, 90 days for a legal hold. So we want to get that idea for how long they are there and have that visibility. So we're going to set that um, up as one part of the workflow, then actually daisy chain it into a second part of the workflow that will handle legal hold, notifying stakeholders, and then suspending and deleting that user. So here's what it's going to look like. We have an, the offboarding triggered like we did in the uh, low cloud persona where we um, have it triggered off of a um, user being moved to the offboarding unit. Uh, OU and then running those actions. But here there's actually an action at the bottom that is going to send the user to offboarding stage two OU. Once we recognize the user is in offboarding stage two OU, that's where we can run the rest of these actions. So we can have a wait for 30 days and then we can even have a wait for approval. So some a manager can actually select when a user should be moved to delete user actions. And next we'll be going over to Brian where he can actually go into what this was going to look like uh, for better cloud as well. Yep, parkour. This is kind of where I like to say that get, things get spicy. Um, at better cloud, I, we are not a huge organization, but we certainly do try to take advantage of all of the capabilities that our product offers. And we are a very high cloud environment, as you might imagine. So we have many, many SaaS applications most of which are integrated together. And we do have an IDP and we do use that IDP for visioning and deprovisioning as well. But then we take advantage of all of the deep integrations that BearCloud has into other applications. So we do things like Dan and Chelsea mentioned, like having multiple onboarding workflows per person. We break apart our offboarding workflows and we even do things like Slack message the status of workflows so that we can take uh, immediate action on them where necessary. And a little bit about the numbers while I'm here. Uh, we have 72 workflows at Better Cloud, and we integrate over 26 instances of SaaS applications. And now those 72 workflows, less than half of them are actually onboarding and offboarding workflows. We have workflows that cover the full suite of what our product is capable of. Everything from complete user lifecycle management to data loss prevention and security alerts. The, the majority of those workflows are actually designed to uh, alert us to potential security issues, such as a user's logged in too many times in 10 minutes and take remediation steps based on that, or um, a user has shared a document publicly that contains credit card information and take action based on that, including an up to reverting file sharing settings and notifying that user's manager. Last quarter, we had over 2,700 workflow runs in that quarter. So if the average takes, if the, the average is five actions per workflow, which takes about one minute of manual work per action, that's about 232 hours that's saved in that quarter or nearly six weeks worth of time in the span of three months. So... We do a lot. I'm going to talk a little bit about the onboarding and offboarding examples of how we actually use our own product. And so for multi-part offboarding, uh, as Chelsea mentioned, at some point when you're developing your workflows, that one monolithic offboarding workflow that you have may not suffice to handle all of your needs. And so we actually break apart our workflow into four distinct ones basically based on one variable trigger and two different groupings of actions. And so the variable trigger is whether or not we want to preserve somebody's calendar events and transfer them to their manager. And then once we've decided that, we go into two different workflow parts. Uh, the first part being an access part and the second part being an archive with wait for duration part. So the reason that this is helpful to us is 
One, there are many actions which don't necessarily apply to every employee at the company. And two, there are actions that can take quite a long time or delay, hold up the workflow. This gives us a chance to do more error handling and actually troubleshoot where the workflow is at if it's stopped. And it also allows us to be more granular with our messaging. So in offboarding part one, uh, basically what we're doing is revoking access. So we do revoke access to all of the applications that a user may is likely to have access to. We cover all of the birthright apps that we assign here at Better Cloud. And while an IDP like Okta or OneLogin is going to stop somebody from being able to log in, there are many things that may need to be done, such as killing existing session cookies that Better Cloud is capable of doing. We also do things like lock a user's laptop. Um, the advantage of this workflow is that it finishes very quickly. One thing that we don't do in this first workflow is a Google Drive data transfer. And the reason that we don't do that data transfer in the first workflow is that Google Drive data transfers can take a really long time. It can take up to a day to complete. And if one of the steps in your workflow is waiting on a Google Drive data transfer to complete, then all of the subsequent steps that happen afterwards may not actually complete. Um, so we put that in the second part of our workflow, um, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, one data transfer step that we do in this first part is something, you know, it, we, we do some unique things like um, when we deactivate a Zoom user, we transfer all of their recordings to the user's manager. And then lastly, we send a notification about what actions we took in this workflow. In part two, like I mentioned, we do a data transfer. That data transfer, once it's completed, we then move into the archive phase of things where we basically have a series of wait for duration steps. And after 30 days, we suspend the user's account and then 30 days after that, 60 days after that, 90 days after that, we move that user into different org unit buckets uh, for organizational purposes. We also do multi-part onboarding. So as Dan mentioned, what works the best for us is to have a series of discrete workflows that are small and will all complete and address each and every one of the needs that a new hire has when starting at Better Cloud so that they're equipped from day one with all of the tools that they need. We have a workflow that runs for everyone that does things like add them to all of the, ger the generic Slack channels that apply to everyone. Uh, we have ones that are based on location. So when you start in Atlanta or you start in New York, we add you to the Slack channels for those various locations as well. And then we also have team specific ones. So as Dan mentioned, we do in fact grant access to certain LastPass folders. We maybe if you are on the expert advisory group like Chelsea, we will automatically create a profile for you in our demo instances of Better Cloud so that she can have access to an instance to play around with and, and enable her on day one. And then we also push a lot of these notifications to Slack. So as I mentioned, there's lots of workflows that have nothing to do with user lifecycle management, and there are many that do. We actually push, rather than uh, just sending an email, we push the information about those workflows into Slack channels so that we can take immediate action on them. Slack is more useful than email in this case because it allows our team to collaborate very quickly, determine what course of action needs to be taken, if any, and then communicate the updates to that in a thread. So in this case, we actually use the API to push to a Slack, in, uh, a Slack webhook, and that webhook posts in a channel with the dynamic fields that we can include from Better Cloud, such as um, a Google Drive file is shared publicly with a link. We can include information about that Google Drive file, who the drive files owner is and all that sort of stuff. Um, in this case, we have uh, a workflow that catches if a user is accidentally moved into a, a organizational unit that we don't expect them to be in. If you don't have the API uh, access in Better Cloud, you could also do something similar like um, Slack channels allow you to create uh, email aliases that if you send a message to that email, it will post in the Slack channel on your behalf and you could do it that way as well. So as we wrap up, there's a few questions you should ask yourself, whether you're low cloud or high cloud. Honestly, you should start with the same question. Am I automating everything I can through Better Cloud's workflows? If it's been a little while since you've been in Better Cloud, 
go take a look. We now have over 60 or 65 integrations that you can connect into Better Cloud. So if you're low cloud, figure out have I integrated all of my available SaaS apps into Better Cloud. And again, if you're low cloud and you're starting to scale up, maybe your source of truth has changed and you want to change the trigger on your workflows or add new alerts and workflows for yourself. For high cloud, are you applying that landlord model? If you're using an IDP that's granting an application, does someone have everything they need to start? And on the reverse, are you communicating properly if someone leaves? Are you making sure that meetings uh, and, and group ownership and calendar invites and things like that, are, is that being handled properly? It, are you making sure that your data is properly being retained? And then finally, what information is being passed from my source of truth to better cloud? How can I trigger workflows? Is there more and deeper better cloud workflows that I can build? So these are questions to consider about uh, as you build not only user lifecycle management workflows, but workflows in general. Now, on behalf of Chelsea, Brian, and myself, we really thank you for attending. It's only day one of, of Altitude, so feel free to check out our other sessions. We really appreciate you attending, and thanks so much for watching.